Hello, everybody. I'm Andy. And from wherever you are looking at this presentation, thank you. So during this presentation, I'd like to share a bit more about my research background, why you should do a PhD and why you shouldn't do a PhD, and also the research that I'm doing in my lab. And hopefully some of you may choose to join my lab for your research. So I was born and raised in Singapore, and I completed my bachelor's in biomedical engineering in NUS, and I was part of the global engineering program, which is known as the East Scholars program now. And I'm also the men one of the mentors for the East Scholars program right now. Between 2014 to 2017, I went to the University of California, Los Angeles for my PhD. And this was supported by the NUS Overseas Graduate Scholarship. Subsequently, I headed to Stanford for my postdoctoral training. And this was again sponsored by the NUS Overseas Postdoctoral Fellowship. So I've actually placed a link below to this NUS scholarship. They are administered and given under the MOE Autonomous University Scholarship for some of you who are interested. And recently I have just started my lab as an assistant professor in NUS, also in the Department of Biomedical Engineering. So for this presentation, I'd like to start off by telling you some of the reasons why you shouldn't do a PhD. So these are some very uh, funny or interesting PhD memes that I've managed to find online. So I think two of the bad reasons to do a PhD is firstly, there will be a significant increase in societal prestige. And secondly, that you will become rich after getting a PhD. I do not completely disagree with this. Um, so what I can say is that after doing a PhD, you do uh, get more respect, especially as an intellect and also from your knowledge and also the contribution that you're doing with your research. And even though you are not likely to get extremely rich after a PhD, though there are some cases where people um, have done so, but I can assure you that the life will be comfortable. And how do you know that you're ready to do a PhD? So this is based on my own experience. So firstly, you have failed at many, many different experiments, even very simple ones, but you still love doing them. And it keeps you uh, excited to go back to the lab redo the experiments and do tests or hypothesis. I think that is passion. Secondly, you have tried many other jobs in areas like finance, um, teaching and everything, but you still prefer research. And that is where I think that research career is something that is suitable for you. So here's a bit about my own personal story. I was uh, brought up in a very typical Asian or Singapore um, family uh, where my mom really wanted me to become a doctor. So as a very obedient uh, child, and so after my high school, I decided to enroll into a medical shadowing program, and that was before my UG or undergraduate education. Um, I didn't really like it at that point, but at that point, other than medical shadowing, I also did research, and I thought that research sounds more interesting. But even after my undergraduate um, education, I thought that maybe I could give um, uh, the medical um, profession another a try, another attempt. Um, that is when I enrolled in a medical shadowing program and that was supposed to be for about two months of a period. And after a day, I decided to call it quits. And it is very unlike me um, to, to just quit, you know, not even halfway into that program. And what really made me realize that research is my calling is when we were doing um, rounds during the medical shadowing, uh, when I was looking at the patient, I was more interested in how the patient actually got some this disease and how can we personalize uh, treatment for this patient. And that was when I decided that, you know, research in areas like personalized medicine using um, personal data like genetics can may enable us to better uh, detect, diagnose, and also to treat patient. And that was when I decided to go um, a full steam ahead um, in my research career. So currently my lab, uh, my lab is focused on immunoengineering. There are three main core aspects. One is on immune cell engineering, which I'll talk more about it today. There's also a lymph node bioreactor engineering and also microfluidic direct cell evolution. So you can read more about them on my website. So now I'll talk about my, my research in immune cell engineering. So I'd like to start off with um, some analogy that some of you are familiar with. So these are some of the food that I bought during circuit breaker. So for some of you who are not from Singapore, circuit breaker is a term that we use to explain how um, businesses are temporarily um, uh, closed 
or they only allow us to take out our food. So there's no dine -in, um, dining services. So um, I bought an awfully chocolate cake. So this is a Singapore uh, homegrown uh, cake in Singapore. It's really delicious and famous. Um, I also bought a sushi, don, um, gong cha, boba tea, and also a uh, shake shake. So I really enjoy all this food. But I think a big problem always when it comes to ordering food online is that you have to choose the different food delivery services and platforms. So Deliveroo, Food Panda, and GrabFood are the most common ones in Singapore. So what happens is that uh, whenever you are trying to order some food, you will open three different apps concurrently and look at different factors to consider when you choose this service, whether the service is efficient, how much is it going to cost, are there discounts, and also whether they will induce any emotional stress. I remember there was an incident where I ordered the sushi and it arrived only three hours later. So I was extremely upset because the food was not edible. Plus I waited three hours for that food. So the reason I'm talking about food delivery services is to draw analogy to the importance of delivering uh, things like cargo, um, like mole biomolecules like DNA and proteins into cells, especially to immune cells to engineer them so that they can better fight cancer cells. And this type of research is known as cancer immunotherapy. So this is uh, this schematic illustrates a very simple process called transfection. So it involves four different steps. First is packaging the cargo like DNA and proteins. Next, we have to transport this cargo across the cell membrane where they are unpacked. And then this cargo have to be delivered into the nucleus where they will perform their functions such as gene editing or be integrated into the genome for protein expression. So this process known as transfection is extremely important for us to engineer new cells so that we can use these cells to fight cancer. And the analogy of a transfection is very, very similar to um, receiving uh, a goods. The step one where we are packing biomolecules like DNA is sort of like uh, people packing goods in the warehouses. Uh, the second step where we are transporting the biomolecules across the cell membrane is similar and analogous to a goods being delivered to a home. And the third step where the cargo is being unpacked within the cells is similar to us unpacking the goods and looking at what is inside um, the uh, packaging. And lastly, um, transporting the goods into the nucleus where they perform the function is very similar to using the goods um, for things like fun and for learning. Other than research, I think one other very important aspect that I do in my lab is to communicate science because I think it is one thing that we are communicating science to the academic environment, academic community. But I think that if we are able to communicate science to the larger public space and also the greater society, we are able to amplify the impact of our research and science multiple folds. So I've written for major journals like Nature, Science and also The Scientist. So for example, I wrote an article for, the sci for science regarding how scientists can recover from rejections and failures, and I'll encourage you to read them before you start your PhD. Um, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, many in-person lab tours are also not allowed. So I also wrote an article where I consolidated, consolidated resources and interviewed people about how can we organize virtual lab tours for recruitment and outreach like what we are doing now. And recently, I've also got a paper um, published in Nature where I talk about how we can use illustrations to create uh, impactful visuals um, to communicate about science. So uh, last but not least, I hope that through this presentation, we will learn more about my background, why and why you should not do a PhD. Some of my research, uh, especially in cell engineering, and if you're interested to pursue um, research opportunities or to do a PhD in my lab, you can email me at this um, address with your CV. And lastly, um, for tech savvy people like you, especially because we are using so much QR code right now for a safe entry. So this is a QR code to my web page where you can learn more about my research, my science communication efforts, my awards and achievements, and also um, the way that I plan to organize my lab and to mentor my students. Thank you very much.